Bike Club, what's going on? Welcome back to another installment of Debate That, the show where we break down one specific topic and provide different perspectives. Which is better? And then at the end of all this, we get your feedback directly about the topic that it is that we are going to be choosing. And this is a battle every installment to see who can make the more convincing argument. And my name is Juan. I'm not going to be doing the debating, but I am going to be doing the hosting. Now, who is going to be debating that? First up, we have Keith Poshik. How are you doing, Keith? You ready for this, bro? I'm as ready as I will be. I always get super nervous for uh, debate that. So here's the here's the hope, and I make a gooder. We're one and one right now. Ryan, it's tied. It's been tough. It's been challenging. We've been getting a lot of great feedback about this series. Do you think you can keep stacking up this this argument perfection that you have? Well, it's not perfection if I'm. Uh, not undefeated. We're enough. one and one, so things are still pretty even. But I'm pretty confident, even though I have no idea what the topic is. So <laughs> we'll, let's just do it. <laughs> well, this is an entire set. So uh, first up, we are going to be doing a topic based on the list that Keith sent me, and the topic okay. is as follows: short versus long title reigns. Which is better or which championship brains are better as a whole so that is the topic that we're going to be doing primarily and it's not just that now i got to delegate the debates for you guys so keith you're going to be making the argument for short title reigns why are short title reigns better that means that ryan is going to have some prep time to talk about the lengthy title reigns why are championship reigns is bruno sammartino included in this i don't know because it's based on what you guys argue. And then at the end, once again, everybody gets to uh, give our feedback. So without further ado, you guys are going to have some time to prepare things. And then we will debate that. Yeah. Preparation time has concluded. So without further ado, here to talk about why short title reigns are better than lengthy championship reigns. I take it over to Mr. Keith Poshik. All right. So short title reigns build superstars. That's uh, that's basically my biggest point about this one. If you uh, if you have too many long title reigns, you risk the um, you risk some superstars never making uh, never becoming a champion, and especially with the uh, the major titles at that time. Like look at a. Uh, the generation um, like of the early 90s, how you have people like Mr. Perfect and uh, Rick Rude that never won titles because the people that had the championship were uh, ha- held it for so long that you um, they just never really got their, uh, their shot at the main title because of it. And the WWE is so good, even with a short title reign, they are so good at spin doctoring it into this um, like a, uh, a bullet point on someone's career. Take Kane, for example. Kane held the title for less than a day in the Attitude Era. And for almost 10 years, the WWE would call Kane a former WWE champion, even though he had it for uh, for less than a day. It's uh, It doesn't matter that... um like the length of it in that way, because now all of a sudden Kane has moved up to this point of, okay, he's a former champion that gives him credibility. If you want to look it up, just don't look too far, but he is still a WWE champion and short title reigns also kind of do this thing where it doesn't give the WWE any, um, it doesn't let them get anything close to any sort of record, especially nowadays. It's, if they get a whiff of like, oh, some some sort of record's going to be broken, they need to they need to break it. They're like obsessed with it, even if it doesn't make sense. Look at the New Day recently. The New Day held the tag team titles longer than they should have, just for the sake of breaking the record, and it hurt uh, other superstars on the Raw tag team division. The club should have won the titles way before they did, but they didn't, just because the WWE needed that long title reign to. Uh, to break that record and that's the risk that long title reigns really um really creates you've you're sacrificing superstars just to do something for the sake of it and uh if they if they didn't feel committed to that you could have built up teams like the club a lot sooner than you did than just have them kind of stay 
in this limbo. And uh, yeah, that's that's basically the crux of my argument. Build superstars. Um, it keeps WWE away from records, which is a fantastic thing. And it adds, um, yeah, it adds so much credibility to people because, like I mentioned, Kane, Dolph Ziggler is another great example of that. He held the title for a hot minute twice, and they call him a two-time heavyweight champion. It just goes so far into building people. Yeah, th- thanks for that, Keith. I think you can also just say it's about reaching a goal, like you mentioned with Kane. Whether he was a champion for a day, five minutes, or 20 years, it was about the fact that he's a former champion now. He reached a rank that many people aspire to reach, but they never get to that to that tier, right? So thank you so much for that. So without further ado, I br- now bring it over to Mr. Ryan McNulty talking about why lengthy championship reigns are better than short ones. See, I think you get a lot more bang for your buck for a longer title reign because of the stars that you make out of those reigns. You can say short reigns are great, but you're also kind of devaluing the prestige of the title. If only a few names have held this title, then it seems like a much more uh, credible prize, a prize that people aspire for. And if you're worried about building stars, I mean, we talk about Mr. Perfect and Jake the Snake not getting the championship. I mean, they still became stars anyway without sacrificing the prestige of the championship. You can see what happens to a title if all of a sudden everyone gets to hold it. You can look at the hardcore title and see that it essentially is a joke because everybody and their brother held it. And I know the goal of the hardcore title was a little bit different than most titles, but even just hot potatoing the championship between Charlotte and Sasha got to a point of it being a little ridiculous. Whereas long title reigns, you can take Triple H's reign of terror when Batista ends it, boom, Batista's a made man. John Cena ends JBL's long title reign, boom, John Cena is a made man. And even and JBL himself, from holding the championship a long time, was seen as a main event guy. Uh, RVD holding the title for as long, holding the TV championship in ECW, he turned that into a title some people saw as more credible than the main title itself. So the the person holding the championship and the championship itself definitely rise because of a long title reign and hot potatoing it around and doing short titles kind of devalues the championship. Even if maybe you get a small increase of the the star power of a guy, it, it you know what what is the championship if you feel like anybody can hold it? So it's about exclusivity in your part. So thank you so much for that, Ryan. I- I definitely see each perspective. And before going into more details, instead of getting to a counter argument, I'm going to bring up an example. The Nature Boy, Ric Flair. So everybody talks about a 16-time world champion. Now, I remember one time RVD said to him, that also means you've lost the championship 16 times. So I want to get your respective perspectives, whether you agree with it or not. Like this is the raw conversation. Rick Flair, 16-time world champion, do you see that as a legacy? Do you see that as a milestone? Or do you value something more like one lengthy championship reign is better than 16 that varied throughout history? So first up with Keith. I think yes, but Rick Flair's title reign... To me, the number doesn't really matter. Like, yes, he if, he was a 16-time world champion, but that's because of how long he was in the business. Ric Flair's body of work is why Ric Flair has a legacy. And I, you know what? Now that I think about it, it does add a little bit because that's a on paper. Like I mentioned earlier, WWE likes those bullet points. They really like to mention that that is a 16-time world champion. There is nobody else up until this year that came that close to Ric Flair's um, Ric Flair's number. Now we have it, and I would say that that person that has it, John Cena, is on that level. But, yeah, you, bullet points. It's basically what it comes down to. What about you, Ryan? Yeah, see, I mean, WWE is always going to position that as something that's supposed to be impressive, so a lot of people will find it impressive. But when you think about it, like they say, he still lost it 16 times. I personally would be more impressed by somebody who just went on this absolute run. You know, you can look at something like Bruno San Martino holding the title for eight 
years, that is far more impressive to me than a 16-time world champion because this guy in the kayfabe of wrestling had just this unprecedented run that we'll never see anything like that duplicated. John Cena is on the cusp of beating that record. Nobody's ever going to come close to Bruno San Martino. So then now I want to bring up another topic because... We can't just talk about championship reigns as if this is something that people don't plan out, right? Like, that's the difference between NFL and the WWE. So, I want to take CM Punk as an example. CM Punk had a 434-day championship reign. And in it, he started out as a good guy. And to the tail end, he was a bad guy, right? He was a villain. So, there are many layers to this. And the first one that I want to bring to Ryan and then Keith is how important to your respective argument, is a villainous champion or a babyface champion as the champion for either a lengthy or a short title reign? Does that play a factor, whether somebody should be champion for a long time or not? 100%. Uh, it History shows that a villain with a long title reign is going to be, at least in today's age, is going to be the more... Uh, successful thing to do because the chase is always more interesting than the baby face kind of just you know having his reign there was a time you can look at bruno san martino and hulk hogan in those days where it would they the the champion was less exposed that you could argue it was better for a baby face to do the long title reign but nowadays it makes a lot more sense of who is going to topple the villain um in the case of cm punk's title reign they knew at some point uh, CM Punk being a baby face for as long as he was during that title reign that they were going to have to change things up to keep things from getting stale um, so the villain it's always more interesting to have the baby face chasing for it taking down the big villain ending the big title reign and thus making a baby face um, seem like a huge deal because he was the person who ended the long reign so then Ryan before Keith goes there you just mentioned so the baby face chases the championship do you see your topic is the lengthy championship reigns? Is there an example for you? Like, I'm not talking about the history of wrestling. I'm talking about Ryan as a wrestling fan. Do you have any specific example of babyface champion that had a championship reign longer than five months that you enjoyed during the time that you watched wrestling? I, I honestly, the time that I watched wrestling, I can't even think of a super long babyface run except for CM Punk's because uh, he had a very long run before he turned heel and I did enjoy that that's a legitimately the only example off the top of my head I can think of uh, we know John Cena had a very lengthy run but <laughs> that uh that wasn't the best plan I think uh for him considering it caused the entire crowd to turn on him so now Keith going back to the other topic, villain, good guy, bad guy, how much does that play into a factor for your topic which is short title reigns? For me it's all about adaptability. Um with CM Punk's title reign, they turned him heel because he, it became stale. Like the babyface CM Punk thing just didn't work after a while, so they changed it up to make it work. And not everybody can do that. With long title reigns, that's one of the biggest um, the biggest fears when it comes to it is, does this reign become stale? And in the recent long title reigns that have happened, I think we absolutely ran into that. Take a look at Seth Rollins. If you're not changing up, if you're... If you, ju if you have the title and you're not... Um, if you're not uh, like changing your character, adapting to all of that, it, you you almost lose credibility to the championship. Where if the title changes hands, you have now you're rebuilding the story. Like okay, maybe the face won it. Now the heel has to do some dirty work to get it back, and then all of a sudden it becomes fresh again because you're able to build this new story around um, around the championship changing hands. It's it's all about adaptability. You guys have made some really convincing arguments, and I got to say that there's no clear-cut winner here because I think that Ryan's answer is the way to go if we're talking about wrestling. Now, if we're talking about sports entertainment, history lends itself more to short title range. So it, it's almost a tie, but if we're talking about WWE, technically Keith has the winning argument. And the reason that I mentioned CM Punk is because when CM Punk won the championship, and I think that some people like 
cherry pick the things that they remember about that. I remember people saying, oh, he's getting stale. Like, where's he going? Who's going to take the championship off of him? The way that we as wrestling fans have been conditioned in WWE for a champion is great. There was that road. He's the champion. Oh, who's going to take the title off of him? Who's going to be the next guy? Because back in the day, there was that prestige, and I prefer that. I like the fact that you're able to have a lengthy reign like CM Punk's where first he was a good guy, then he was a bad guy, and then at the tail end, people liked him. He was the guy. Yeah, he was the guy. (laughs) You had had a, a movie, right? Like, I think that it's great when you have one story. You can say, hey, look at this championship reign. This is how he started. This is how he ended. I know it's a controversial topic, but look at a Chris Benoit. Chris Benoit won the Royal Rumble. And then he did a lot of nothing because he was a clean cut, baby face, good guy champion. Prove me wrong. And people got bored of it quickly. People wanted that championship. I was a huge Chris Benoit fan all the way from WCW. But when you don't have that character, you can be as good as you want in the ring. And we can keep having an extended conversation about this. But I think it all comes down to, does your character change once you become a champion? So that is the closing opportunity that I want to give each of you. If you could see something change from the opposite side. So Ryan, you're talking about lengthy ones. What would you like to see change from short championship reigns? And Keith, what would you like to see that could make a lengthy championship reign work? So let's let's switch this up to close it out. So first up, taking it to Mr. McNulty. Uh, I wouldn't change too much about short title reigns. I think they have their place. Um, But like if we're talking short, I think maybe like a couple months is good. I I don't like to see from the the short title reigns I'd like to see end is like when John Cena wins it for two weeks or something. Because that honestly, how much do we really get out of that aside from them just trying to either transition it to somebody else or they're just trying to put another record on there. They're just trying to get Cena to to 16 so short title reigns let's stop worrying about uh the the number like well like they're gonna do with charlotte that that's that's my issue with short title reigns when there's so clearly there's an ulterior motive behind besides the story so that's what i like to see change and uh for long title reigns i would like to see more adaptability in character and not just have the same person hold that title the entire time. To go back to the CM Punk angle, I do think that is the perfect long title reign because the CM Punk that won the title and the CM Punk that lost the title are two very different characters. Uh, He was able to recognize that things needed to change, and they did. Uh, An example on the other side of that would be Seth Rollins recently, where We all got bored of, oh, hey, this is the champion of the authority, and then they beat that into the ground for so long, and it just didn't change. If you're going to give somebody the title for a very long time, make sure that they could stay relevant, especially the world titles, because you're... um, you're, that's the champion of your show, and that's um, that's the person that represents your brand. And going down to the mid-card titles, if you're going to have a long title reign, defend it once in a while. Look at Dean Ambrose's U.S. title reign, and I think that's all I need to say. He maybe defended it five times for his whole title reign. It became a, like, what's the U.S. title at that point? So you need to make sure to keep it front and center. Yeah, I really I think it boils down to what Ryan said, where it's about the journey a lot of times. But I think the main issue with WWE is that you worry so much about the journey that once you become a champion, we don't see anything else. And it sucks that we'll never get to see this. I think Dan O'Brien was going to be, but we never got to see it because obviously the whole injury. Dan O'Brien had this huge journey that everybody was in for the ride. But what would have happened nine months into a championship reign if he was still a champion? Would people just then turn on Dan He would have got wrecked by Brock Lesnar. Yeah. <laughs> but even I, then, honestly, that would have been it's great. Probably the, uh, it's probably the unpopular opinion, but I think Daniel Bryan would have had a lot of parallels in Chris Benoit's championship reign, where everybody wanted it, but once we got it, it, be- it would have become stale fast. Because we even started to see that a little bit before Bryan got injured. Yeah, it's funny. You look at every every contender and we have an obsession as wrestling fans for when is x or y going to turn i think it's almost like you're a good guy you become a champion 
become a bad guy. You're a bad guy, you become a champion, you become a good guy. So this is an excellent topic. Thanks to both of you for bringing up some spectacular arguments. And now we leave it up to all of you watching either on YouTube or Vidme. Who do you think made the more convincing argument? Is there another side of the story that you would like us to really uh, get to? Do you have any recommendations for future Debate That videos? This is a series that is not just great for YouTube and Vidme. This is great for those listening to us on the road. So we are more than open to all of the recommendations. If you like this a piece of content, definitely upvote, share, thumbs up, subscribe, wherever you are. Just get the word out about everything that it is we are doing. And say you want you want to go one step further. You see the people on screen right now? Those are Patreons. For just $1 a month, you can get a bunch of features. For $5 a month, you get early access and your name included at the end of every video that it is we do. For all the information, go to patreon.com slash by that. So until next time, thank you for watching. And we'll be back with a lot more right here on Byte That's Debate That.